NerdsReviews.com presents Nerds Talking, the podcast. Yo, we talk about lightsabers, stunning your TV screens, what you want to stream, everything beyond your dreams. Want to talk about movies, sports, or even politics. Go ahead and tune into us, we'll give you all of it. Whatever you debate, an Xbox or PlayStation, Marvel or DC, Mac or PC. Teraflops when the movie drops, gigabytes, chips, RAM, no matter what it is, we got all of it. Welcome to the show. Nerds Talking, the podcast. Nerds Talking, the podcast, episode 14. What's in Mount Shasta? You're about to find out. Well, uh, well, welcome, everybody, to uh, Nerds Talking, the podcast. I'm your introductionary captain, Captain Phillip. And today's episode, it's a little bit of uh, a uh, conspiracy or something like that. I, don't know. I mean, Mount Shasta? I thought Shasta was a soda, like a cheap knockoff of the Coke and Pepsi, but apparently it's a volcano? People live in it? I don't know. We're about to find out here on Nerds Talking the Podcast. Enjoy, everybody. Welcome to Nerds Talking the Podcast, episode 14. And we are uh, having some of greatness. I was going to say, there you go. Presence of greatness. I'm Lafayette. That's Carlos. We have two guests. Hello. One you already know. Julius has been on the show a few times. And we have a new uh, special guest, Matt. And they're here to talk about... A, uh, I'm not sure if anybody's actually heard about this. Um, I don't know what what would you call it? A conspiracy? Not, I don't know if it's a conspiracy. What is it? It's a a myth. Let's just start with a myth. You know what? That's these a good two guys way to are gonna it. prove it whether it's a myth or if it's not. It's a, no, it's a good good way to, to. It's a myth. Yeah, that's how I would call it a myth. Um, I have watched YouTube videos on this, and uh, they're very interesting. But you two will fill us in on this topic. And it is a topic of Mount Shasta and the hidden city within it. And um, people well, actually that, would have to be below it, not in it, because Shasta is still an active volcano. True, but maybe they're controlling it and it's all Ooh, fake. And they're good using point. Like, maybe uh, Julius soda, and Matt know about that. Like soda yeah, and uh, yes. what happens when you put, what, what is it when you put in soda in it? Baking it soda and vinegar, I think. Or, oh, no, Mentos. No, the, <laughs> Mentos. Maybe, it's, bunch, maybe yeah, it's a bunch of Mentos yeah. and barbecue sauce. And um, so anyway, so it's Mount Shasta and the uh, the city beneath it. And um, now I don't like I said, I've watched YouTube videos, but they're kind of they're a little bit awkward. Um, they don't they it's almost as if they get to a point uh, at Mount Shasta where then they start to like go into meditation, meditation state and they transport mentally to the city and they're there. But when they're filming themselves, they're just kind of in a meditative state. So you two will fill me in on this Mount Shasta myth of the uh, hidden city and uh, your take on it and so forth. So first, we'll start with Matt. So Matt, All right. give me everything. Throw it. Throw everything at the uh, at the wall, as they say, and see what sticks. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. And uh... Yeah, I'll probably just start off pretty, I mean, pretty much how I came to know about Shasta was uh, it kind of started uh, uh, probably with Julius talking, you know, about it and, you know, saying that there's crazy things over there. I never, you know, took it serious. And uh, to me, it looked like a pretty cool mountain to go and hike. So that's how I became interested in it. I was like, okay, it's only about four hours away from me. We can go over there, camp and go for a hike. And whatever, you know, everyone believes in, they can just, you know, believe in that. I'm, you know, I'm going for the, the exploration. So that's how that started. And um, and nothing really, the first time I went, nothing really, you know, uh, super, you know, supernatural or anything like that, I really noticed or saw until after the fact. When I started thinking about what other people were saying about it, and kind of like what Julius knew about it, I just thought, oh, this is just crazy, crazy stuff. But I've been there probably three times. And each time I go back, I, if I see stuff or hear what other people see or what they say, and I kind of put things together, it's really interesting what, uh, what I've kind of, you know, what I've seen. So I've kind of had to put it together because it's kind of after the fact. Give that, us an example. Uh, what, what did you hear? And then suddenly you come to realize, well, that yeah, that could be something. 
Okay, so like the very the very beginning, we're driving over there. Uh, it takes about a half an hour to drive up to the uh, you know up to the to the base of where where you can you know start hiking. So you drive up there. I think it's about maybe nine or ten thousand feet uh, elevation. And so we started driving up, and um, I saw like an old. It looked like an old man, like really old, long white beard. He had a white robe on with sandals walking down the mountain. You saw God? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> God on the I mountain. saw an old man. <laughs> That's what I saw. You saw Was a there a burning bush nearby? <laughs> What's going on? Merlin? No, like, it's, who did it's you see? like all there is is just a road, windy okay. road going all up, right, straight right. up the mountain, 9,000 okay. feet. And did you ask I him if he was him. lost? I want to pick him up. I wanted to oh, pull okay. over and talk right. to him. And Julius freaked out and said no he's a beggar keep going keep going oh, and oh I, really i surprised I was julius surprised. wasn't like hey get him yeah i was I am surprised up, hog see time him. throw in the back yeah but because you, gotta I thought, say, you gotta say about those guys who they are you gotta explain people why well i don't i don't know in... i don't know okay. anything really about okay. that i'll just tell you okay, what I'll i saw okay okay and uh and so i saw that i thought it was interesting I want to go see if this guy was, you know, a prank or whatever. But mm -hmm. after I started thinking about it later, I was like, okay, I don't think this old guy, okay, probably in the 60s or 70s, I don't think he could walk up and down that mountain. So it's kind of weird. He was levitating, my friend. <laughs> Either that or he had a motorcycle <laughs> parked behind the trees or who knows. But that was kind of strange after the fact that uh, we drove by that guy. Um, and there's something similar to that with another uh, good friends that we have. And, you know, I think, you know, you've Guinea. I don't yes. know if you know Sanjar, but I met, uh, I they, met him. Sure. OK, they when they went, they picked up a guy coming down the mountain. Um, that go? Well, this is how it went. They got in and uh, they speak uh, Sanjar and you uh, Guinea are Russian. They speak okay. Russian. This guy started speaking to them in Russian. So I don't know if that's a coincidence or how this guy knew what language they spoke. But I mean, that's pretty random. They just pick up a guy to take him to the top and they're speaking the same language. Um, by coincidence, I don't know. But this guy, he said he, he lives out there in the woods five years. Uh, no contact with people, no cell, cell phone, nothing like that. And in that conversation, they said, you know, you're really, you're, you're, you're crazy. You know, it, it, what you're doing, it's very weird. And that guy told Sandra and Eugenie, they're crazy. He said, you guys are crazy for how you guys live over here. Sounds with cell familiar. phones, Wait, all so this technology. He lives, he lives in the woods, not yep. in the city we're talking about though. Right. So he's just right. a hermit. Pretty or much. X lives KGB off the land. Hiding. <clears throat> His own self witness protection program. I I guess maybe Putin nice. sent him out there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, that was kind of weird when I heard that. Pretty weird, and um, and then you know, as we got up the mountain, a lot of people, you know, weird people up there. Um, you know, they're banging drums. You know, one o'clock hmm. in the morning. Uh, on they wow. what they went down the mountain, so you can hear this guy like those you know drummers like. Uh, that you put around your back or whatever, and you just bang them on the side. Like a Congo drum down. or something like that. Yeah, like, you know, the football games or whatever. Yeah, or right. Yeah. You know. So he's banging on that going down the mountain in the middle of the night, pitch black, you can't see. He goes down probably about a uh, half an hour banging that drum, and then all of a sudden it's silent for many hours, then he bangs it coming back up. I thought that was weird. A um, lot of weird people up on the top, kind of, they have like these stones all over the place stacked in circles that they walk in. It's just, you know, I, I never really studied what's really going on up there, but just observing things, it's, it's strange. And, but does that, um, but does, that Jul does that kind of, does that build the mystique of, of the city or is it just people wanting it to, they're trying to build something out of nothing. So they're going out of their way to, to build the mystique themselves 
because yeah. they are rich, rituals. Well, that and and maybe they've reached a point where there's no turning back. They have to more or less play along because they're like, shit, I've already gone this far. That yeah, I have to make sure it exists in some form, and people have to somewhat believe it because I live in the yeah. freaking woods and I don't have internet access. No. Yeah, it, or I think it just attracts, you know, the mystique of Mount Shasta attracts weird people. Because I saw a guy when we were eating at a restaurant um, out just talking to trees out, in, you know, <laughs> right right out the restaurant, what? just walking around talking to trees. And I'm what? like, dang, that's what I mean filled with crazy people, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Is it just is, is it just a built up built up mystique to the point where they it's like they have to play the role now because they've they've gone too too deep into it. Like people that believe, you know, like a like a QAnon conspiracy, they can't turn yeah. back now because they've been labeled the QAnon nut job. So you're like, hey, ah, uh, sure, I hope it happens. I know it's not going to anymore, but but yeah. let's hear let's hear Julius's take on Mount Shasta. Well, Julius, <clears throat> yes, but first, what Matt said, uh, yes, I must be crazy. Too. I was talking with the trees, by but I've been taught by a native Indian. I went all the way to Washington to meet this guy who said he's been inside the earth physically. And he explained me what he saw over there. But again, that's not about Malchasta. So now let's get to Malchasta. Uh, I went many years back, I don't know how long ago, 20 years ago, uh, 17 years ago, some, something in that range. I, I been working uh, in a, for a family uh, through Sears. And being there, uh, they were uh, with an association, a skiing asso- association, and her husband. And the lady, uh, she told me she's a guide who's going up to the top of the mountain every day. And she was a tall lady, over, over six foot tall, uh, kind of 35 years old, a blonde lady, very well uh, fit, you know, athletic. So... Uh, and I asked her, okay, uh, why you do this every day? Because that's my job, she said. But I can tell you one thing, a lot of weird things are going on over there. So the guide who go up and, da- up and down the mountain every day, she's telling me that a lot of weird things are going on. I said, okay, so what is going on? I said, I, we, we don't have time to talk about this. It's too much to talk about, she said. So I didn't understand that, what she was talking about. By years back, when I got into this earth theory, I learned that uh, under the mountain live a Lemurian civilization, uh, which are fifth dimensional people. They are blonde people with blue eyes in between six foot and a half and seven foot and a half tall. And uh, they have uh, probably a a community community about uh, a million and a half or something like that, about their range, but very advanced. So then I also learned that uh, their style of life, their system of life, they went down there 12,000 years ago when on the surface we got uh, nuclear war. That's where the five deserts are. Uh, there were uh, five big cities, or you, I don't know if I can say countries, but probably their cities in that time were a lot more huge than uh, that we have them today uh, because they were more advanced, let's put it that way. So... Uh, me and Matt, uh, I, I told Matt, okay, I want to go to Chast. I want to see what we're going to find over there. And we end up going there and we crossed Chastita Mountain, the sister mountain of Chasta, for about eight hours. So Matt, it's about half of my age. And I kept up with him. He had legs like a horse. <laughs> the guy was going and going and going. I did have to carry your backpack a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes. But let me tell you, so, something weird started to happen with Matt. And Are he said, floating? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. He said, I contact this guy, contact me telepathically. It was very Who peaceful. Who said that? Matt said, you said that, Matt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, he said, they uh, contact me. And, and they, they told me to take your back. Now, if he was joking or not, I don't know. But he had to take my bag so he could carry my bag. But I keep up with him for eight hours of climbing. Guys, that's not easy. Believe me. And you know why? Because uh, my feet got, uh, when you press your foot down, you, 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 your foot is uh, sinking in the sand. And that's why it's three times harder than when you just climb on a rock. And uh, so uh, 
without ropes. I mean, I hang down uh, on on a cliff one time, and I looked back down was a couple of thousand feet straight down, and I said, "What in the world I'm doing over here without ropes?" But anyway, we got one break, half an hour, then we went further until we got to Chasta Mountain. But by that time, my feet, my feet gave up. I couldn't, I had to drag my feet, actually. Uh, it got cramps. I started screaming. I couldn't walk anymore. I was devastated. I like somebody take a knife and just stick it in, in my feet. And then we met two people and a dog. It was an old lady and an old man. Very weird. They were kind of up there. And I was asking myself, how this old lady got over here? I mean, she was really yeah. old. She was like almost 80 years old, 75 to 80. I mean, she was out there. And, and then we talked to them and I asked them if they know any caves around here because that's what we were looking for. We were looking for some caves. And they said, no, but uh, we can tell you down when you go back to the parking lot, in the way back, you're going to find uh, a spring, uh, a spring, a water spring coming mm-hmm. out of the mountain. And then when we went down, and that's why I'm saying the story, because this is very interesting. What I learned about the inner earth, that they their water, it's a life. And our water on the surface is dead, but their water, it's a life. So uh, we got to the spring, and that was coming out of the mountain. And then people put some pipes over there and, you know, whatever. But I, I went as high as I could to get the cleanest water possible. And I fill up, I don't know how many bottles. And I was so thirsty. I drink four bottles of water. Matt probably drink only half of it. So we went back home. And the next day I called him. I said, dude, you must be in a bed sick. He said, oh, my God, I'm, I'm full of pain everywhere. I have muscle spasms and cramps all over my body. And he was barely talking. I said, dude. I feel like a newborn, no problem whatsoever. I couldn't explain how <laughs> that happened. Honest to be, I'm supposed to be in a bed, sick, actually, after what I've been through. Not one muscle pain in my body whatsoever. No pain at all. And I was thinking how this was happening. So I heard about that water that have healing properties. Now, how can I explain this? I drink four bottles of water, one after the other. I was so thirsty. And second day, no problems whatsoever. What's the explanation to this? Does anybody have an explanation? I didn't talk nothing else, no medication, nothing but that water. That's all. So let's go uh, uh, further and speak about uh, uh, under the mountain. So as I told you guys, I was... uh, practicing some telepathy and I learned that under the mountain there are priests and priestesses uh, there is a queen uh, Ronamu called uh, a, a queen from uh, 30,000 years ago for, from Lemurian time I tell you what the story says and uh, that's uh, she's still alive and she's looking like 32 or 33 years old and many people ask how this is possible well, they know how to reverse age. They get down to 30, go to 33, go back to 30, 33. Why? Because you mind control your body. You mind control your cells. And they command their cells or train their cells to backwards the aging. So you age, but I'm telling you what I learned. Now, if this is true or not. And that confession I got from that native Indian I visited, he told me something that he actually got young. And he got, uh, he told me how to do it, but you got to practice, of course. And uh, he got witnesses. So let's get uh, get back to Chasta. So I contacted uh, this priestesses and this priest. I knew there's a priest and priestesses on the top because that's how, how their uh, order work. But uh, I didn't know that the priestesses was a queen as well. I learned that later. By contacting, that I demanded uh, to meet, so on, anyway. But then later on, we learned that they have a daughter. And then uh, telepathically, I uh, contacted the daughter, and uh, uh, we start an argument. Uh, we start an argument because she treated me like I was a little kid. I was flirting with her in the beginning. I didn't know she was married. You were doing and- this. 
Wait, you're in, you're, you're in you're in the mountain right now telepathically. Tele 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 telepathically, I was communicating, and uh, she started to treat me like a little kid. And I was I got angry, and I said an you know an, an inappropriate word to her. Oh, but suddenly, <laughs> right, wait, 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 right away, the, the, right away, the queen got in between us, because that, that that's said that she's her mother. She got in between us. Said no, nobody ever called my daughter. Wait, so Matt, you were you were there during this? No, 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 no I don't no, know no, what no. what Julius is even talking no. about right now. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, guys, just be patient a little bit over here. Oh. Well, hello, everybody. Yeah, we had to take a break because um, I don't know if you noticed that they they, they kind of seemed to ramble for a long time. This guy Julius, he just talks to ever and he talks about stuff that is like mine. Uh, I mean, I feel, kind of feel like my mind is melting sometimes listening to Julian talk. Wizards and uh, magic waters, and uh, I'm confused sometimes. You know what I mean? Uh, I think I'm in the mountain right now. I think. Am I? I don't know. Let's get back to the show, everybody. No talking to Pop Case. <laughs> so this is so this is very similar to what I've seen on YouTube, where people get to a point yes. at the mountain. Yeah, and they don't yes. actually. There's, there's no physical. There's, you can't go into the mountain. Well, you have to, let, you have to let your mind, like, yep. yeah, yes, mind meld me into the mountain. Now, now let I, me tell you one thing that Julius met this lady uh, named Diana. Um, we went. We made a special trip. We drove all the way the heck down there to meet this lady. Uh, this lady and I start watching her. Uh, she has some YouTube videos, and I check them out. And this lady is a con because mm. she was charging money to go to hike with people to the mountain. And she said she's going to bring them to uh, this place, this mystical place. And she said, OK, we're here now. Close your eyes. And then they would <laughs> they would. And this guy, this guy set her up. He had a camera and everything, set her up, gave uh -huh. her the money and set her up. And uh, and then. I think uh, basically she got in trouble because it was filmed that she was conning people for money. Um, and it was completely, she would just say, close your eyes. Okay. You're there. Who do you want to talk to over here? And like so seance? we drove down. Yeah, pretty much. And Julius huh. went and met her. I stayed in the car. He went in there to talk to her. He said that she was acting very strange, walking back and forth. And then he, she sold him a bunch of stuff, like two hundred dollars with a book and some vitamins. And I was like, Julius, we drove all the way the heck down here for this stuff. I was pissed. I was like, let's go find some caves and let's hike up the mountain. And uh, I and I was pretty upset at that time because we drove all the way down there to meet her. And and that's what some people they what they do over there. So, so she sold you some snake oil. <laughs> they, yeah. Yeah. I think that's what I see on YouTube. I see the no, same thing no, you no, saw. No, so, no, guys, but Julius, continue about how you I, met the I, queen. I tell you, I, yeah, yes, I, but, but let me say what she sold to me. She sold to me a book, which I have it. Mm -hmm. And she sold to me spirulina. Spirulina, you can buy it from a company, not only from her. Spirulina, it's something with, uh, which uh, help your body uh, to uh, have get, all the mineral, minerals that you need to get for your mountain. body. It's a supplement. But yes, what, what about the mountain, though? I'll okay. sell it to you for two hundred dollars. We 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 <laughs> went up to the mountain three times, three quarters of the way. We we had to sleep overnight over mm -hmm. there if we wouldn't want to go further. So Yugiri went even further because he is light. He could jump over those rocks like um, uh, I was Little amazed. Leprechaun. The guy was jumping over those yeah. rocks. So he went further up, like uh, an hour away or two hours away, and he saw he said a temple over there. <laughs> He said the temple like ruins. He said, I'm not, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to go over there to risk your life because it's dangerous. I said, whatever. So, but okay, let's continue. Now, I didn't contact the queen one time. She was, you know, because telepathically you feel their feelings. As I said before, you feel their feelings. And she was kind of upset at me. And I did try to contact her and apologize because the daughter said, mother, let me solve my own things. I'll handle this, she said. So anyway, then I asked, ask, hey, you forgive me. She said, yes, I will forgive you. But Julius, you're arrogant like you've always been. She told me that. 
So I don't know. Is she talking about past lives? So I have no idea. Because uh, by what we learned is people live like 900 years or even longer. Some the queen has been told like 30,000 years old. So anyway, uh, I uh, being contacted, suddenly I was driving. I was driving and I was thinking about inner earth. And suddenly the queen came into my mind. Now people say this is happening into my mind, but this was happened spontaneous. She said, how are you doing? Uh, my darling, she said, you are very, you are very precious to me. <laughs> so I said, do you forgive me? She said, yes, I forgive you. And I said, how hard it's for me to get inside the earth. She said, if you try hard enough, you will make it. We can meet you halfway, but you have to try hard enough. That was the answer. But I said, you know, you don't have no right to interfere with my thoughts. She said, that's true. Except when you think about inner earth, because that is my domain. Then I have a right to interfere with. And when you flirt with her daughter, that, you know, that, relax. That was buddy. her. That <laughs> was that was her answer. But then something even more weird happened. <clears throat> I got a contact, very short contact from inner earth from a young lady. A young lady contacted me, and she was speaking with the English accent. She was speaking like English people, not accent, but like English people. Very short, was a very short transmission. And she said, the reason I contact you because uh, you are my twin flame and we're supposed to work together and we want you to work with us. Oh, the twin flame yeah. is back. We heard the twin flame story. We know this one already, Julius. We know all about the twin <laughs> well, flame. Well, 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 well. I'm here to talk about Mount Shasta only. <laughs> Do you oh, guys believe okay. that it's real okay. or not? Do you guys? Okay, okay. You guys. Well, so, so right. I, I okay. can, I can vouch for. Okay, what, what he's talking about right now, I don't know anything about that, but I can vouch for some of the things he said. When we went up Chastina and came down, there was a, a an old couple. Re, re, they look really old, um, and like I said, everything's after the fact. We talked to them. We talked to them a little bit, like, uh, w you know, where are the caves? Do you guys know anything in this location? Um, they didn't really know anything. And then they told us about the water. And I said, okay, that sounds really good right now. You know, some fresh water. And we start walking down the mountain. And as we're walking down, I'm kind of thinking in the back of my mind, how the heck these old people get way up here? And I was like, that's kind of weird. So um, we found the water. I drank a little bit. Julius got, he, he had some containers. He filled them up and he was drinking them all day, all the way drive home. He was drinking it. And that I can vouch. The next day I was sore as heck. I could barely even move. And Julius, when I called him, said he felt fine, no pain. I, that to me was kind of shocking because it should have been the other way around. I should have been feeling okay and he should have been all sore he's a lot older than me um so i found that was kind of strange and the thing with new guinea we went up so high and then it got kind of dangerous and slim to get up you know further up the mountain but new guinea he's a small guy he can maneuver and i was like you know what i'm scared of heights anyways this is as far as i'm gonna go you go ahead new guinea i'm not risking it you know so he kept going up the mountain me and julia stayed behind and he told us later that he saw like a temple up there, some weird structures up there. So that I can vouch for that as well. So, but the other stuff he's talking about, that's, that's Julius and it's whoever a bit, else. It's a, it, it's a bit more advanced and people don't understand it because exactly. a lot of people don't even exactly. understand their telepathy today. They do not understand. So this. basically Matt, your take is magic water. Yeah. Old people made it to the top of the mountain and you're like, how are they doing it? They're old. Mm hmm and the third one was um, some you saw a bunch of stones and people doing rituals and mm -hmm. and uh, that's the old just, man coming down the I mountain. Mean, and you saw the wizard. That's right. You saw yeah. the wizard. <laughs> and oh, oh, oh. So it's, it's a very like it's, uh, it's it was. It, it, nothing, it was. You've, nothing you've told me so far has made me want to drive up to Mount Shasta and be like, where's the city but, at? Where's the hidden city? Uh, <clears throat> well, no, I know. Let's talk about this, this people. Guys, let's talk about this people with the robes and the sandals. Mm -hmm. It's been told that inner people, that's what they wear. It's about 75 degree temperature over there. They have an inner sun and uh, they wear sandals and robes, everybody. 
I go and open a clothing guy, shop this in there. Guy, this, this guy looked just like that. And I didn't realize that uh, in that time, but uh, you know, later on we talked about it. And uh, also I heard that many times they come out of the mountain, come and look around the shop and, and then go back. And uh, not that they really need to, to, to buy from us anything, but they are just curious to get up and, and to like to another world. And now, that's about those people. Julius, that's I know you're people. planning an expedition, right? Yes. Matt, are if you, you joining Julius? Come, if you yeah, I'll definitely come, go back. I'll definitely okay, go but, back. But there's a lot of what games over there. Right. Well, what I understand, oh, oh, Julius oh, wants to rent a helicopter to take him to the top. Is that correct? Nah, Julius? I don't like what, that. Okay, I don't like okay, that idea. Well, Why would you go to the top? The entrance is below, right? The entrance okay, is at the bottom, okay, right? Okay, guys. On the top. I learned I learned that it's an entrance to the top. They have an elevator which goes through the crater. So that's that's one entrance where they have an elevator which come all the way up to the top of the mountain. That's what I learned. And there it's another cave, Pluto cave, where it has a small waterfall on it. I saw it actually, a guy showed it on YouTube. And I heard about that also, a confession, some people who went into the cave seven to, uh, to nine miles deep. And in the end of the cave, there is a, an old elevator. That's what this lady said. There were seven people who went in there. But they said, forget to get, uh, forget to get into this body over there. You have to be a fifth dimensional uh, person. Or you cannot get in there only if they allowed you to get in there. I, I so don't know. That's, what, that's what I learned. So, so there's so, an elevator. My, you know, I got another question. Does the there... elevator belong to a mine shaft? They I have be, no idea. Probably. And my <laughs> other question is, uh, are have these people that are seven feet tall and are dressed like wizards and speak Russian, are they, they, they come? Speak, they can speak a lot of languages, but they don't speak. They are all telepathic. Okay. Do they uh, ever come to the surface world? Yes. And if, if, they, do, if, if they do, <laughs> you're not going to be either. <laughs> they have a high technology, five, fifth dimensional people can have like a clock device around them. You don't even oh, wow. see they are around you. So they That's can be cloaked. They, Come on. Yeah. Now we're getting Not into cold. Marvel Comics. Okay, now Come this, on, see, here's the thing. Come here's on. the thing. Here's the problem Guys, with here's the I'm problem with that. You, the, I'm Doctor telling Strange, you what they're talking about the, now. The, the how, did you, how do you see them? They're the prob, Yeah, first of all, Julius, how do you know they've been here? No one can see them. Well, <laughs> let me tell exactly. you what uh, uh, hey th this guy, what's his name? Uh He's very well known, an English guy. He used to be a journalist. Um, uh, he's Clark a theorist. Sherlock he's a theorist. Holmes. No, no, no. David Beckham. Uh, Ian Fleming. He's, he's very well known. He's an English. Uh, um, he used to be. Uh, he's everywhere. Gosh, I can't remember his Bond. Uh, Julius Assange. James Bond. No, uh, come on. So anyway, this feed, guy. Feed Phil. Someone he, feed Phil. He, he confessed that he's been into a motel room where some people were talking to him and these people actually he, he couldn't see them he couldn't see them he Wait, said you cannot what? see us <laughs> yes Julius, come on man. I, I i tell you i tell you what i saw actually on the Wait, YouTube. how can you tell us what you saw he didn't see anything <laughs> Julius. It's, okay, so, uh, it's called schizophrenia okay. man oh, okay Julius. okay let me tell you what i saw <laughs> what this, again this, what <laughs> but this, this wasn't no. This wasn't in Malchasta. This was in Washington. Okay, but the, you're talking about he talked to the people from Mount Shasta in a room, the invisible. No, 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 no. That that wasn't in in Mount Shasta. No, 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 no. He's talking to the people from Mount Shasta. No, 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 no. Then who is he talking to? No, the invisible no, people. Who talking, are the invisible people? He di he didn't say who they were, but they were uh, a lot more advanced. And he said, you cannot see us, but we have to have a meeting. We have to talk. So, uh, gosh, what's his name? Oh, everybody know this guy. Ah. Okay. And there's, okay, there's anyway, one other anyway. thing that, that, Hold on. Uh, Matt's, that. Matt has one more for us. So this was after the fact. This was probably, so this was before I even met Julius and even knew anything like this about Mount Shasta. We went on a family trip, uh, my family and my wife's parents to uh the caverns mount shasta caverns you could take a tour they put they put you on the boat you go over into the mountain and go inside the caves which is a really cool tour and now that i started thinking start putting you know everything together there in that tour 
when I'm going back and thinking about it, there was weird stuff they were bringing out. There was like um, a big old giant um, like throne inside there carved out of stone like a throne huge and um you know probably for like a giant there was all kinds of you know they had crystals in there they had um even some like carvings of like weird um look like gnomes or something like that wait where was this where was this at this is the uh shasta caverns you could take a tour gotcha. there. you got you got to pay but uh they'll take you on the tour through the mountain gotcha gotcha and so that was kind of weird, that tour. They were bringing out a lot of weird things that was actually inside the mountain. And this was a long time ago, probably like 13 years ago when I went on that tour. So that was kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I was just putting stuff together after the fact. So a lot of weird stuff over uh, there. So let's hmm. um, just um, real quick. If anybody actually wants to join Julius on his expedition... Email us here at nerds talking at <laughs> yahoo.com. And we'll put you in touch with Julius because if we get a big enough group, I'm going to join this group and we're going to figure this out. I'll go. We're going to find the entrance. We're going to drink water. We're going to find Gandalf. This, I'm this bringing is bringing vodka. Gonna... Are you guys now, are you guys taking oh, an escalator right, or the elevator? elevator. Uh, escalator or elevator into the mountain. That's I'd rather really walk, is. you know, because it's an active volcano. <laughs> well, so through no, the fire, no, you're not that, supposed that, to take that's, elevators. Guys, that's not to the mountain. That's at the lake. It's down. Ah. I don't think, oh. even think you have to go to the mountain. Isn't uh, it's no, before this, that? Way before isn't, that. Isn't, it's isn't by the this, lake. Isn't the city like five miles yes. below? Yes, yes. The city. Yeah. Is. Mm. Wait, nine, nine miles below. below. Nine. Nine miles below. How do you nine even miles. get there? Like, imagine that. Well, that is... we've been we've been to Pluto Cave, me, uh, uh, Matt, and Eugenie. We went inside one of the Pluto Caves, and we got uh, two miles deep. We went two miles deep, actually. Yeah. Oh, tell enough. them about the uh, the naked man, Julius. The <laughs> naked man. What the hell's to... going on here? <laughs> we, 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 we want to go to another another uh, Pluto Cave because they have about nine Pluto caves over there. And we want to go to another one and we and say, okay, here's another Pluto cave and let's see what we're going to find. For, we got out of one of them. We want to go to another one. And uh, uh, we seen a truck over there and suddenly a guy completely naked uh, appeared from behind the truck. And mm -hmm. then he saw us, he got scared, he picked up his shotgun. I well, said, okay, so, guys, we got we got to back up over here because something weird is going yeah, on. Yeah, so so we we surprised them. We th this place uh, it was GPS. We were looking for it, and we went off road. Uh, it kind of you know in kind of like a rural area, and there was a truck. When we pulled up, we surprised him. He had his boots on and he was naked. And I told <laughs> uh, I told you, Guinea, whoa, 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 slow slow down. What's going on over here? He had a shovel. Trick. No, no, he, dude, he got the gun. Too. He, he, he had a shovel. He was doing something over there. Oh man, I don't know what he was digging for or burying, but uh, we surprised him, and he got behind his his uh, his truck door was open. He got behind the door and was just staring at us. And I didn't know if he had a weapon or what, but I told you, Guinea, just slowly back up and let's get out of here. I don't, you know, this is really weird. So but that's, that was another in the middle of nowhere. Else that came that's up. Why. So, so the, the, the city is called Telos, right? The hidden city yes. of Telos. And, um, and so if you do join Julius on his adventure, uh, Julius, are you, what are you going to show them? Are you going to show people the city or are you going to just kind of go well, on cabin there, tours, which they well, have there already for like $15 there, a ticket or? Yeah, yes. There is a guide who can take you anywhere you want to go. My okay, why did I visit this lady? Because she told me on the phone that I have two guides who can take you anywhere you go, a, anywhere you want to go uh, at uh, Shasta Mountain or around Shasta. There are two guides, and she recommended me one guy. So I have his number, he can take us anywhere we want to go. And uh, that's what I was interested in because when I go over there, I don't just want to wander, uh, wander around, I want to go straight to the cave and just go in see what we're gonna find the only way you're gonna find out if you go there you know it's true or it's false and if it's false it's false if it's true it's true that's that's what i want to find out it's hard to get on the top of the mountain takes many day, days of climbing 
you get go three quarters of the way easy you, in a couple hours. But after that, you need robes, you need experience. And I did try to get a helicopter, but it uh, looks like they uh, got that program off. So, ah, by the man. way, it's an, army, it's, it's, an, it's an army base over there. And they watch uh, very close by. It's an army base. There, it's a very good connection on a cell phone. You're all the way up on the mountain, but you have a very good reception. Okay, well, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So, Mount Shasta is the uh, the hidden city of Telos, which you can only get there, I assume, oh. telepathically, according to YouTube. Believe it or not, I forgot to say something. I, uh, me I and Matt, we, we, we <laughs> I yeah, me and Matt, Matt, okay, guys, me and Matt, we got separated, and I told him it's not a good idea to, for us to get separated in the middle of nowhere. Something happened to us. You know, who's going to call or who, who's going to help. So, uh, you know, those rocks are slippery, not only slippery, but they slide. Not all of them are, are uh, uh, sturdy or firm in, in, into that sand. You can slide with those rocks. And that's what ex actually happened to Matt. He almost fell off, uh, you know, by, he told me the story that he started sliding and finally he grabbed another rock and he stopped. So I said, I yeah. told you it's not good to separate. But when we were separated, I was by myself. And now you guys are gonna say imagination. <laughs> I tell you, I yeah, tell just, you what. You know what? I, just let I, us, I, just lay it in, lay it on thick. There we go. No, 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 no. Make I, it quick, I, I tell, guys. <laughs> I heard the call. Somebody called my name. It was, that was a, Matt. A, a, no, it was a lady. It wasn't a man. It that was, was Matt. Lady. He was falling down. It wasn't no, Matt. His no, voice no, gets no, higher no. pitch. No, no. He was scared. The, the sound the sound came from the mountain from the right side, oh. not from the left side where Matt was. Matt okay. still was on Mount Chastita, which was in connection with Mount Chasta. We were right where the connection is. And I went down myself to get on Mount Chasta. And on the right side, I heard a voice, uh, voice calling my name, Julius. I looked around. I looked around. I yelled back, where are you? I cannot see you. So I tell you guys what I heard. So, you know, wait, if that, you want to believe me, that's, that's fine. It? If you don't, you don't. You, that's I all. bet you she was seven foot tall. You heard a I voice. Do, I so have you heard, no idea. You I heard a voice. Her. I, I heard a voice calling my name. That's such that's a all. mean trick. Mm, well, on her part, not uh, on her part, not been, yours. On her part, your wife calling for you from Sacramento, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Julian. You yeah. It could have been you. It could have been that you pocket dialed someone by mistake, and they're on your phone, like Julius. Yeah, Julius, are you there? Uh, hey, you hey, know, hey, that, hey, I think Matt fell. You should go back. I, I was that no, part no, was no. true. I I could have died. Uh, go, I was crawling <laughs> on the side, and I noticed uh, the further I started crawling, it was pretty steep. Um, which if I would have slipped, I probably would have been fine. But when, right in front of me, a whole uh, section went sliding down and there was a huge boulder that went down with it. So if I would have went down with that, with the boulder right in front of me, when I would have hit, you know, slid down to the bottom, that boulder would have rolled on me. It probably would have killed me. So did you, did you have any of the water with you? No, but, uh, uh you're, yeah, I, you're screwed, I, now you're that screwed. I know about it, I'm going to go get it. Cause I'm mm -hmm. going to need that in the future. And one day <laughs> did either one of you, were either one of you carrying a gold ring? Nope. Either one around, of me. around your no? neck. Okay. I'm just checking. I'm just, checking. did you I see, had, I had a knife and Julius uh -huh. had uh, a combat knife an ax and a machete. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> now the Jesus voice you heard, Julius, the voice <laughs> you <laughs> heard, um, did it go like this? Precious. Precious. It was very <laughs> loud, dude. It was very loud. It was very sure. loud. It wasn't. Oh, it yeah. wasn't like. Man. Oh, it's your mind imagination. It was very loud, actually. All right. And, so, uh, okay. I let's get this back. together then. Let's get it together. We'll go find Telos. Email us, nerds talking at yahoo.com. We'll get a group together with Matt and Julius, whoever else wants to join. Uh, so this is this is actually fascinating stuff, and. Um, now, Matt, real quick, you said you had some sort of information on UFOs. Is that correct? Yeah. So this is anybody can go on Google. It's it's been uh, it's been on CNN, NBC, CBS, Fox, whatever. It's all been reported. So part of the um, the COVID nineteen relief bill that they signed. Okay, in that bill, there's like five thousand documents uh, or pages or whatever, and so no one has ever you know 
research all the whole sure. thing. They just pass it, and there's a bunch of crap in it. Sure. Well, in that, there's a full mm-hmm. disclosure that has been passed that um, that the military has to disclose to Congress. Full disclosure on UFOs. Uh, 180 days. Anybody could do this research and find it. So 180 days when that bill was passed, full disclosure um, has to be given to Congress by the military. So yeah, yeah, I, 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 that's, that was all over the news. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. pretty interesting. Guys, I, guys, I'm gonna give you a disclosure. I know if you guys believe me or not. <laughs> I, I saw one alien myself. <laughs> Oh, boy. Were you See, watching we Mexican go. League soccer? There, there we go. And let me describe you how the alien looked. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. no, Go ahead. Tell he us. Was, tell us. He, that was in Europe. Now he okay. was in Europe. I okay. was younger. Okay. It was like about six foot away from me. Uh-huh. It was about nine o'clock in the morning. And uh, this uh, just appeared out of nowhere. I, I just look at him. I was very calm. And this alien just uh, stared at me. It, wasn't, it was humanoid, but not human. It was kind of a greenish, grayish color. Okay. Uh, uh, no hair, mm. no ears, just probably mm. like two holes. Saw this movie, Prometheus. Uh, no nose, kind of a, like very tiny. I don't even know if I can consider a nose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Long jaw, kind mm-hmm. of very long jaw, and uh, no clothes. And got two hands, two feet, kind of weird looking creature. And just stared at me for, I don't know, a minute or two. And then I looked on the side to see, do I have any protection over here? I'm just, uh, you know, uh, alone with this, uh, this creature. And uh, um, the creature just disappeared, was gone. So, but uh, look at me like, uh, I don't know, was, was staring at me for, for a little bit. I, I would say a couple of minutes, but I was very calm. For, for some reason, I was extremely calm. I knew I uh, got, didn't got any bad intentions to, towards me. So I tell you what I saw. This uh, uh, it wasn't an imagination, wasn't uh, asleep, wasn't nothing like that. I was walking, standing up. So, uh, you know, some people imagine stuff. I, uh, I know what imaginary world is and I know what the real world is. So I, I know how to make that difference very well. All right, well I'm there a we guy who, who can argue with myself if I have to. So I like to be anything to be really honest. Uh, no lies, no impression, no, I want to tell you something what is not. I tell you exactly how it is. I, that's how I see it. That's how I say it. There we go, everyone. Julius is going to take you to Mount Jast on a tour. He saw an alien as a child. Uh, Matt told you that UFOs can, you can now basically look them up, uh, explanation from the government. Mm-hmm. And um, you know what? You take what you will from Mount Shasta. And, and if you think it's, it's lit, look it up. It's all over the internet. You can see it. Mount Shasta, Hidden City, or look, in, look for Hidden City of Telos. That's T E L O S. And it is quite, it is interesting. It is very interesting. And like I said, from what I saw, it is, um, it is more, everybody says they get there by, by telepathy, you know, telepathic or, you know. So when you guys get to the mountain with Matt and Julius, you better know how to use telepathy. That's all I can say. So, because, no, i not. No one's ever been inside the city on YouTube, at least not yet, that I've seen. Oh, oh! Somebody said he's been inside the city. What's his name? Uh, the the guy that saw the guys in the hotel. Colonel, he no, talked to the invisible guy, no, guys. No, no, no. This guy was a colonel uh, at Area Fifty One. He's been living under ground in uh, Area Fifty One for probably twenty years. Matt, you know about him. We talked about him. Uh, so he went in the city bad, and he came I, out I of the city. The name. He went, went into the city. He was taken inside the city and he said the daughter, Sharula Dogs, came out of the city. And she lived in actually in uh, New Mexico. For She was on the surface for 20 years in and out. And something interesting I saw, it was a lady from Arizona who met her actually. She got meetings like 20 years ago. I said, I didn't believe her until something happened. 
They said she says she's from Inara. She's the princess over there, uh, the the daughter of the. Oh queen. my goodness! You know, her, uh, no, 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 mm, no, no, no. That's it. No, we're done. <laughs> we're done here. We're done. Julius. We're done. No we're more done. princesses oh, and queens and kings and magic, mm-hmm. magic lay people. No, no. And, Let's save this one for uh, next uh, time. Uh, other oh, people, other people time. confession. <laughs> I'm talking about other people confession. Not no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I, we, I want to hear, I only want to, I want to hear your opinion, not third hand opinions and stories. Well, so, I tell you my opinion. So when are you guys going to be going on this adventure? Uh, well, soon, hopefully soon. Okay, so we you know, definitely. Now, now it's, it's probably a lot of snow over there, but yeah, yeah, but we will def. You are gonna have to come on the when you get back the next day. You're gonna have to come tell on the us show all about it and tell we'll us about call, all the. We'll sh- call you guys from the top of the mountain. I, I like there that. I like yes. that because that you, that you could pass the phone to the shamans and everything. Yep. Yeah, I'll show yeah, you yeah. in no, a live no, video. To, to, people to the chip people monks. up on the mountain. A lot of chipmunks over there. Chipmunks. Yeah, chipmunks. Chipmunks like Alvin Simon not, and not, not mine. Yeah, 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 like that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I feed them when I sat down. I threw peanuts and they came all around. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> very, all, very right, all right, all right. Well, thanks for <laughs> Matt and Julius for joining us here on Nerds Talking the podcast. That was our Mount Shasta uh, um, myth, or could be true. You just look it up for yourself and find out here on Nerds Talking the podcast. We'll be right back after this small break. Well, um, and that was very interesting. Um, I might go on that trip with them. I want to go to the mountain and see what they're talking about. And then, then um, maybe meet some people and uh, get some sandals, you know, some water. I don't think there's anything there, but it'd be nice to take a trip. Anyway, we're right back here. And they're talking to the podcast. Uh, we, uh, Marie's back. And she's going to kind of talk about uh, it's, it's, uh, Mount Shasta or whatever. And they're talking to the podcast. Welcome back to Nerds Talking, the podcast. Back here with Carlos, myself, Lafayette, and Marie has joined us once again. And did you listen to all of that? Did you? No. You didn't hear any of that going on about I, Mount Shasta. I heard the last part of it. I've never heard of Mount Shasta. I mean, I've heard of Mount Shasta. Hold on just a second. Yep, yep. Get out of this. Get out. Oh, a cat is being I bad at um, on the podcast. I just looked up for a second and yeah, I, it's um, not my thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean the fact that they assume well not just them a lot of people think there's a hidden oh. city under mount shasta yeah. is a trip right um, right i just and think the funniest it's... thing is like you said no one's been there unless it's telepathically which doesn't make sense to me doesn't well and you sense. can and, and the people that say they've been there it's like people that say that um, they've witnessed a miracle yet nobody else but them witnessed it so you can only take their word for it you know what i mean right right right. you can't take somebody else's word for it so when someone says i've been to the city of telos oh uh anybody else is this you know or did you take any footage or blah 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 oh no 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 just take my word for it i've seen the lost city of atlantis no i haven't yeah but that's another thing there's people that you know that it's the same I, the same idea same concept i mean w- it was there a lost city of atlantis probably not but people want to you know they love the idea and the myth you know what about there was a colony an island colony that just disappeared when they europeans were coming over do you guys know about that Mm-mm. You know, um, the history books but okay so when they were colonizing america there's a island off of north carolina or something like that and people came over and started living on it and then they came over one day and everyone was just gone mm. um, julius was there hmm aquaman i don't know never heard of that now google that somebody elementary school but wait you learned it in elementary school mm-hmm, i did they taught you about an island that disappeared off north carolina Mm -hmm. because it was well it was part of american history it was like the colonizers came over it wasn't just the the lost city of atlantis with some tall aliens or whatever it was like an actual colony there might have actually been um records of it and the people just randomly disappeared one day was it was Mm -hmm. it north carolina well you know what you know that show american history x i think they might have done a season on it Mm -hmm. okay you know what it's right here lost colony on Ro, uh, Roanoke Island mm-hmm, that, that is now in North Carolina mysteriously disappeared 
in 1587. Oh, that was way before the settlers. Um, no, because Columbus sailed the, a the ocean blue in 1490. Oh, you know what? No, it disappeared between 1587 and 1590. Wow. Wow. And it's called Ron uh, Roanoke. Roanoke <laughs> Island is surrounded by water in every direction. Um, Islands are usually love. surrounded by water in every direction. No, no. I was just saying how... Um, uh, it sounds like it's it's some some of it's still there. Maybe it's global warming. Um, yeah, it says here Roanoke Island still exists off the off uh, in Dare County, off the coast of North Carolina. Um, hmm. Interesting. So, um, hmm. sorry, my cat. The whole time he was sitting here, you could see him walking all over my computer, and then as soon as I get on, he starts fighting with the other cat. I can hear it. I can hear it. So Roanoke <laughs> Island is, is still there, apparently. Uh, and Atlantis is supposedly off the coast of Portugal, which is now known as the Azores. And so I don't know. It's all interesting to me. It's um, Do I believe Mount Shasta has a city underneath it? I do not. <laughs> no, hard but, to believe there's, a, there's anyone living under a, an active volcano. You guys well, have telep telep telepathy. Telepathy? Telepathy? Uh, well, it's, also, it's also hard to believe that these people have a, their fifth dimension, super advanced technology and so on and so forth. And they're just greedy. They're just selfish. They don't want to share. They don't want to, they want to hold on to this for themselves. The fact they can cloak, the military would love that. You know, or just ex-boyfriends would love to have the cloak, you know. So <laughs> that's just it's called camouflage. Yeah, I mean, could yeah, man, imagine that. I'm Ima free free gym memberships, except for they'd be like, why is that machine moving? Uh -huh. It's like a Harry Potter cloak. Is that what they were talking about? That's what I was picturing. Man, I just the fact that has anybody ever been here? Yes, but you can't see them. What? <laughs> that, that doesn't compute. How do you know they've been here then? If you can't see them, you know. Um, you gotta eat the mushrooms on the way up. All those little mushrooms. Uh, just right. Well, easy. it's like I said, people that carry conspiracies, myths, and so forth, and they go so deep into the rabbit hole that they can't turn back. They have to make it legitimate some way. So those people that are up on the mountain playing the drums and dancing and building rock monuments, and they're the ones that carry the myth because they have to now. They can't well, turn that, back. Does that sound familiar to you? Like the That's flat right. earthers, even though they're proved wrong every time, they're so drawn in and so sucked down in this rabbit hole they have to stay there yeah you cannot the thing is you can't turn back when you're so strongly indoctrinated into something that mm -hmm. you push on your friends and you tell them it's true and believe me believe me blah 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 and then the day you say oh you guys are right you're the idiot you're the you're the fool that basically lost all his friends and nobody wants to hang with you anymore and because you went to the whole terror room and spoke to a invisible person which right. just means I rented a room. Yeah, all that means is I rented a room to masturbate tonight. That's all it really means, you know. And the invisible person was there, just whoever I fantasized. Maybe it was a ghost. Oh, screw a ghost. Bobby Brown said he said, had sex with a ghost. <laughs> okay, well, this is our Mount Shasta episode. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This is like our bonus episode. So, hey, stay tuned. We have another episode coming up just... Uh, Jump back out. You'll see it right there. Subscribe to our show. Turn your notifications on. Nerds Talking the Podcast. Enjoy your evening, afternoon, morning, and wherever are you. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Maybe you're in Mount Shasta. I don't know. If you're in Mount Shasta, email us at nerdstalking at yahoo.com. All right. Thanks, everyone. Well, that's our show this time, everybody. If you just stick around, it's another show shortly because we did two shows this week because we, the coup, you know, we, we do our thing, then we're pretty radical type of guys, you know. Plus, they're talking about the mountain and then uh, sticking about myself. Man, I really gotta go to that mountain because I wanna see things that no one else has seen. I wanna be telepathically connected to the world uh, below us. You know what I'm talking about? So, uh, yeah, it's really kind of cool. So, join Carlos, uh, Maria, and uh, Lavia right back here on episode 15. You get two this week. That's amazing. That's amazing stuff. And remember, you can contact us at nerdstalking at yahoo.com.